I will, but I gotta go. Why does everyone think I'm gonna get in trouble? Hi, I'm Stephanie Panicello, and I am the voice and motion capture actress for Claire Redfield in Resident Evil 2. Claire. Claire Redfield. Live around here? No. I'm looking for my brother. Oh, thank you. I'm happy to be here. So when I went in initially for Resident Evil 2, I had no idea what it was. Um, they had put out a casting call for, you know, a motion capture, full performance capture um, for a game. Uh, they never tell you anything, but obviously um, kind of knowing about video games and being a fan of Resident Evil, the second I saw what was going on and incredibly iconic lines were being said, I knew exactly what was happening. So Capcom didn't initially just get in contact with me. Um, so it wasn't one of those things. So after I had gone through the audition process, you know, they also had callbacks and there were several rounds of all of that to make sure that they were making the right decision, of course. Um, and so then, uh, then once I got it, that's when I did hear back from them. Um, and I was just beyond the moon. Like I was so excited. How are you doing? You know, just surviving. <laughs> that's good. Any luck with your brother? No. So the way I actually got started in voiceover isn't, um, I guess, the typical way. And to be honest, there really is no right way. There's no right path on how it happens. And that's pretty much for anything related to entertainment and acting. But um, for me, my story actually began, um, I, uh, I came to Los Angeles on vacation. And um, I was staying with a friend and I actually never left. I didn't have a plan. I didn't know what I was necessarily doing. I just knew I was on vacation and I was out here. And my mother uh, was the one that said, hey, you know, you should really get into acting. This is something that you've loved. This is something you should do. And to be quite frank, I mean, this was something that I did always love my entire life, but I had no idea that I could create a career out of it. So um, she said, you should really give it a shot. And I did. I, I came out. I was uh, staying in a friend's house and pretty much, you know, they were like, hey, you know, uh, you can't stay here the entire time. So like, what do you think you're going to do? And so I decided to go ahead and pursue it. And I was, you know, it's kind of a long path, but I ended up going, um, and eventually working, uh, I had a day job where I was working at a Starbucks and at night and I, I would do stand-up comedy. And during uh, one of my shifts, I had a customer who always saw me working in between uh, shifts and I was kind of like writing and doing stuff. And he was like, you know, have you, um, he's like, what are you doing out here? And I was like, well, uh, I'm thinking about, you know, trying to pursue acting, which it just always sounds funny to say, but I, I started there you know and then he was like well have you ever thought about voiceover and I was like yeah absolutely but it's really hard to get into and you know blah 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 and uh, at that point I had already been taking lots of acting classes and obviously I had experience growing up my entire life acting in like every single play and all student films throughout in college and so um so anyway, so I, he said, if you ever want to come in and sit in at the studio, I work at a sound studio, which at that time was Technicolor. And so I said, ah, I would love to, I would love to sit in and see what that's like. And I did. And I sat in and I got to see how everything went. And then eventually a position opened up through the production side of stuff. And, um, and you know, I had to prove myself and show that I could do stuff. And obviously, I, I mean, I had my college degree in political science and international affairs, which had nothing to do with it, but I was capable, in other words, you know, of being able to learn and pick something up. And so I started working as a note taker and a script supervisor, and I would sit in on sessions and watch just the masters up there perform. And one day an actress didn't show up and the director said, hey, go on in there, you know? And that was literally my first uh, voiceover job, which was on Final Fantasy Lightning Returns. And from there on, it just took off. Hey. It's okay. I won't hurt you, I promise. Do you need help? So when I found out that I was going to be Claire Redfield, I, I mean, it literally blew my mind because I was like, holy crap. Like she is super iconic. Um, I mean, I already loved the original version of her and it was, it just, I got super excited. Like I, I kind of became a fangirl, even though I was clearly, um, 
I am clearly an actress, you know, but like it's it's hard sometimes because you have those moments and and uh, trying to figure out how to, you know, um, fill those shoes for someone who's already been created in the universe, but then be told that, hey, we want you to make her your own, you know, and we want you to um, and put what it is that you want to put in there for her. And it was just amazing to be able to be given, you know, that kind of freedom over this incredibly iconic, amazing character that I really admired and like love, you know? I'll get you, you fucker! <laughs> So the original Resident Evil 2 did incredibly well and kind of set the bar for its time, you know, back in 98. And so with Resident Evil 2 Remake coming out, I mean, we had no idea what the reactions were going to be like, how the fans were going to react to it, were they going to like it, was it going to do well, and it just blew up. And it's so amazing to see that it's become, you know, like you said, this best-selling game. I mean we had no idea it was going to do so well and it just continues to do well. And now, you know, we've actually, um, we've gotten the Golden Joysticks Award for Game of the Year, you know, Ultimate Game of the Year. And then we were nominated for Game of the Year and multiple other categories. And so to see our game do that and do so well, it just, it's so rewarding and I feel like we all feel very blessed. Um, and I know Capcom, you know, also is just like, wow, like this is amazing that we were able to do that. And so it's it's kind of a real honor um, and it's just been so great for to see the fan reactions and how that was going to be. And, you know, um, as far as like, you know, fame and the huge fan base and all that stuff goes, I mean, we had no idea. We knew that there was a fan base. We know how amazing that uh, the Resident Evil fans are, but I don't think we fully knew how amazing Resident Evil Universe fans really are. And I, I know I have had such an amazing time um, getting to know everybody at conventions, uh, people that have been watching my Twitch streams, uh, you know, interacting in, on Instagram and on Twitter. And, you know, just in general, everyone has been so fantastic. I had no idea it was going to be like this. And I'm loving every minute of it. So thank you to our fans. <laughs> You'll find it. Is Sherry all right? For now. I swear you bastard, if you hurt her. Claire Redfield to me is, she's like the everyday person, you know, that has been challenged throughout life, you know, that has had ups and downs and everything and just has this very, um, survivor way about her to begin with. Uh, now she is a bit of a loner and so you know trying to kind of figure out how to portray her and be very real in how she is um, you know that was that was a big factor for me and um, she's just I don't know she's such a badass too though that's the thing like what's beautiful about her is that she's vulnerable and she's strong and um, and you get to kind of see her strength kind of come through and especially with this being like the whole origin story for her I think that for me was just so beautiful to be able to try and figure out how to make that work and with every interaction that she has with every single character you know you kind of see her come into her own you know so obviously at first it's with Leon when she's looking for her brother and so she kind of um, naturally gravitates towards him because he has similarities to Chris and stuff um, you know obviously being a police officer or all that you know, kind of has that uh, authority kind of way that she knows about Chris. And then, you know, having that experience then with Marvin, um, and then once she loses Marvin too, like completely loses him, that's kind of a big turning point for her. Um, because I feel that she realizes that she's actually completely alone. And I think she kind of always has like I said, been a loner. So that's something that she's used to, but not something that she wants. And now she's in life or death situations. And then, so then when she meets Eliza, I mean, that just changes everything because she realizes Eliza's almost a, um, 
like a, a symbol of who she is throughout her life. You know, at least that's the way I see it. Um, and so, you know, she's she takes her on and, and wants to take care of her because she knows what it's like to have been alone, to, to have been um, an orphan, you know, and not have somebody there. And she was, you know, obviously Claire's been lucky enough to have her brother, which she doesn't now, but now she's taking on that role for her relationship. Uh, sorry, I just said with Eliza, uh, with Sherry, that's so funny. So Eliza Pryor is the actress, that's so funny, um, with Sherry Birkin. So, um, but, uh, so it's really great to kind of, to see that relationship. I feel that Claire and I do share more in common than obviously the voice and facial reactions and body, you know, movement that I've given her. Um, you know, in some ways, um, and this is, this is why I think I've been uh, fortunate enough, but, you know, wanting to make her a bit more, uh, I don't want to say quirky per se, but she's a little quirky, you know? She's got a sarcastic, funny sense of humor, and that's something that I personally tried to give to her, you know? And I think that we share also, um, I mean, not to sound, it sounds weird to say that, but I feel like uh, I do care about people, you know? And so... Um, I tend to be a more um, loving or caring person. And I think that's something that Claire, uh, I definitely relate with because although she has this really tough, strong exterior, she's a total softy um, and she has a really big, big heart. And that's something that I really admire in the character. And that's something that I always want to bring out uh, aside from the fact that she's a total badass and really tough, um, which I also relate to. Uh, but um, she's, I don't know, she's great. And I, and I do feel that that's where we connect is on that understanding of um, caring about others and, and understanding that even though she is a loner, uh, she's, she doesn't think in a loner mentality about other people. You know, she wants to help others. She does feel that there's a greater good to do. Um, and that's something that I definitely relate with. I also grew up with a bunch of boys. Like I have three brothers. So um, that tomboy-esque type of thing is probably there. Uh, although I can be very girly. <laughs> I'm like the girliest tomboy. So uh, I think Claire might be a little bit more tomboy than I am, but that's totally cool and I really love her for it. Um, but I think that that probably, that uh, that toughness is probably there from there too. Claire. I didn't foresee this. Excuse me. Where is she? Hello? After working on Resident Evil 2, I definitely kept myself updated on the series. I wanted to see what was going on with it, what had happened, um, anything that I maybe hadn't touched up on. So um, definitely connecting with the fans. So I started Twitch streaming uh, not too long ago uh, and I did it uh, for fans. And so I did a uh, Claire Redfield playing as, uh, or sorry, Claire Redfield actress playing as Claire Redfield. So it was a whole Claireception, uh, which was really fun and awesome. And it was great to see what, you know, fans would tell me and stuff too, which I think that's a really great way to stay updated as well. Um, but I had played Resident, the original Resident Evil 2. I'd also played, uh, uh, honestly, a little bit of Resident Evil 3. I did play Resident Evil 4 and... Uh, I had played Resident Evil 7, like in VR, but um, so much fun. And uh, it's, it's just something that's made me want to play even more. And now that I've become part of the universe, it's just made me want to get more and more into it. I want to play Code Veronica. So that is on the list to play. Um, I definitely got to do that. And, um, you know, uh, I have played obviously other games. So it wasn't, um, I, I wasn't like, oh, all of a sudden I work in games so now I care about games no uh, I grew up with video games so my very uh, first console that my parents ever got us was um, it was in 19 uh, and now I'm gonna date myself I'm not gonna say how old it was anyways I got the PlayStation and uh, we got Rayman and Tekken 2 were the first two games that they that my parents gave us so those forever will be um, some of my favorites, uh, but uh, also Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider franchise has been huge for me. I'm a huge Tomb Raider fan. I actually got to do uh, motion capture as Lara for their cinematic trailer that was on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which was a big, uh, a big accomplishment for me as 
personally. But um, but yeah, but as far as other games go, I love like the Crash Bandicoot. I love Uncharted. I love The Last of Us. Um, what I like, I like uh, Heavy Rain. Um, I tend to like adventure games, but I also obviously, you know, play all kinds of other games. I got into like Call of Duty for a while there, like zombie mode. Oh man, like I couldn't stop myself to be honest. I was a bit addicted. Um, and then, uh, just so many games, honestly, that's, that's the thing, like, games are so much fun, and, uh, I thoroughly enjoy playing more with, uh, with people than completely by myself, but I do give myself, like, a three hour, you know, kind of time frame if I do play by myself, because if not, like, I'm just gonna get sucked in and not see the world anymore. <laughs> Sherry's been implanted. She can't be saved fucking kidding me you're her mother get in here in order to prepare myself to be clear i had already been taking you know gun training and i have you know some basic stunt work under my belt and you know i started to you know i played a little bit of re2 again but i didn't do too much i didn't want it too fresh in my head because when i talked to um you know the capcom team it was uh it was really great because i actually i after you know, one of our first uh, kind of, I think it was one of our rehearsals or it may have been a shooting day, I can't remember. I think it was a rehearsal day, but I went uh, and I and I asked, you know, um, Mr. H, who's the, you know, the head producer on it. I was like, hey, um, is there anything you want me to do differently? Like, do you want me to make her voice a little bit, you know, uh, higher and register? Or do you want her to be like this or like that? And he looked at me and it was so fantastic because I, I don't speak Japanese, but I just could sense what he was saying. It was so amazing. But uh, so his translator was there and pretty much he was like, you just are Claire. Do whatever you do. And I just was like, whoa, because that blew my mind because I was like, OK, OK, so iconic character. And, um, you know, and because I had been struggling because I was trying to figure her out. I was like, how do I make her who she is? Because she's not like, she's not, uh, I can't make her, you know, just like the original Claire as much as I absolutely respect and love what Alison Court did. Like, I was forced to do something different, you know? And, and as an actor, you always want to do something different too. You don't want to just mimic what somebody else has done, somebody else's performance and stuff. But, um, but yeah, so I went ahead and I was like, okay, well, let me think of the characters that I really love that I'm inspired by. And I was like, okay, well, she's not Lara, you know, in Tomb Raider. And she's not Ellie in The Last of Us. And I was like, who is she? And then I realized, like, she's whoever the hell I want to make her. You know what I mean? As long as I have, like, her essence there, like, I just played. I had so much freedom. And it was just so amazing because... Then she was free. She was free to be taken wherever she needs to go. She was able to grow. She was able to, you know, get to another another level. And for me, that was the most amazing thing when Capcom just said, hey, you make her how you want to make her. Whatever decision you make is exactly the right decision. And I just loved that. That was so freeing. And as an actor, that is one of the best things you could ever hear. Sherry, don't worry. I will get you whatever you need, okay? Why are you doing this? Because I care. I love the way the game ended up turning out. I mean, it's better than I could have ever imagined. And on so many levels, I mean, the sound design is impeccable. Uh, the lighting engine in there, the way that you see like the uh, random like zombies that are just sitting there in the hallway at RPD. I mean, and the way the light shines in like that. Um, obviously with the sound bringing that up again with Mr. X, like that was incredible. And then just the way that our scenes came out, like there was, there was some really special moments that, uh, you know, when you're in it, you don't necessarily know if they're all going to register or how something's going to come out. And it was just really great to see that. And the feedback from fans has been so great. I mean, I'm not going to lie. When it first started coming out and they first announced it and they hadn't really shown much of my character at that point. And so, uh, yes, of course, I shouldn't have done this and I'm not supposed to snoop around and read the comments and stuff, but you can't help it sometimes. Like I started watching the YouTube videos and the commentary on things and 
you know, at first it was a little scary because I was like, oh man, like how are fans going to react? And there were some negative reactions at first before anything came out. But then once the game came out, it was like people that were complete haters all of a sudden like were like in shock that they're like, oh my God, I, I actually really love it. And that to me is huge, you know, and not to say that I really um, am really affected by whether or not everyone's going to love it. Like at the end of the day, like it is what it is, you know, and art is subjective and not everyone will love it. And that's fine. But the fact that the overwhelming fan base loves the game. I mean, that's that's just amazing. That honestly makes me so happy and it's been so fascinating like just getting to meet all of the fans and meeting them at the conventions. I mean, I've had some great uh interactions with fans. I've had some fans that have, you know, gifted me, like literally gifted me cosplay stuff for my Claire cosplay, have gifted me um, like uh, different uh, like weapons, you know, that she has or, uh, you know, the, the book that she has or Sherry's locket. I mean, just so many things. I've gotten fan art. Um, I've gotten just such an amazing response from fans and I'm just so lucky and so happy to be a part of the Resident Evil universe. I mean, it's, it's just so rewarding. I don't know what I'd do without you. Are you kidding me? You were doing just fine without me. So I came along and got you all sorts of trouble. My favorite moment playing Claire in the game. Um, now there's two different favorite moments of playing Claire in the game. Because there's the literal playing Claire as in I'm playing the video game itself. Uh, which I have to say one of my favorite moments and least favorite moments at the same exact time was dealing with Mr. X uh, because he was just ridiculous. And if you ever have a chance to watch my uh, Twitch channel, uh, which by the way, it's because I Claire, um, I know, very punny, uh, but um, it um, you'll see just how terribly I do uh, with surviving that situation, but I never gave up. So favorite situation and least favorite situation at the same time, like I said, is with Mr. X. Um, now, as far as my favorite moment playing Claire as an actress within the game, um, I would have to say that probably my interactions with Sherry's character uh, are some of my favorite moments. One of the, I think, most touching moments that I have with her is when I go and I find her laying on the ground and I have my whole interaction with her and uh, with Annette Birkin who is talking to, to her daughter through the uh, like camera intercom and she's just leaving her there and not doing absolutely anything and and I think there's just a really that was such an amazing touching scene to be able to do with her because there's this vulnerable child who's just sitting there and you know it was it was really beautiful and kind of empowering I think to to be able to, you know, respond to this, to Sherry, you know, but also kind of fight for her and, and tell her mom, like, what is wrong with you? Like, how are you not understanding that there's a difference there? You know, so that was one of my favorite moments. Um, also with Chief Irons, man, there's so many moments. Hold on. There's also the Chief Irons moment, which that was like really fun because I got to help choreograph what that was going to look like and what the what that whole sequence was like. And I had some freedom at the end, which I know has become some of my fans like favorite lines uh, when she like runs to the gate and she kicks it and she's like, I'll get you, you F-U-C. Obviously, you know the rest of that. Uh, you know, that that was really, really fun. Um, and then just one more I would say is the, um, I think it's G4 that I'm up against. Jeez, is it G4 or G3? And I like kind of jump down. Um, and uh, again, another scene with Annette. And, you know, she says uh, something about, you know, you don't know what you're up against. And then the response is, I have a pretty damn good idea. Like that was a really cool, like badass moment, uh, which also another favorite moment. Oh, it's kind of crazy. I have several favorite moments. I don't know. I can't pick one. <laughs> hey. Hey, Sherry. I got to go. You stay right here, though, okay? I'll be back soon. I promise. Choosing one favorite quote uh, from Claire is pretty difficult to do um, because there's different 
um, there's different sides to Claire. You know, Claire can be very sweet. Claire can be very sassy. Claire can be very strong and angry. Um, so I kind of have uh, three different ones that I particularly like for each, uh, each let's say, shade of Claire. Um, Obviously, I think the first one would be kind of the whole reason why she does everything is summed up so beautifully with Sherry when Sherry asks, why are you doing this or why are you helping me? And Claire just responds with, because I care. It's so simple, but I stand behind it and I love it. That's one of my absolute favorite and I just think it's so beautifully just like clean and clear. If I were to say the angry version of her, I would say when she's with Chief Irons and she says, I'll get you, you yeah, that, you, know, you know what I'm getting at. Uh, that one is one of my favorite. Um, and then I would just say when she's sassy. I mean, uh, you know, there's also just like the commentary that happens just during gameplay. And one of them is, um, I hope you like bullets because I've got a hell of a lot more, which I think that's just fun and confident. <laughs> Sherry. <laughs> Sherry, I'm just saying goodbye to your mom. Mom, please say goodbye. I don't think that there were any scenes that weren't included in the game. It was pretty precise on, you know, what was going to be there. And, you know, there's only so much time that we have in order to do things. So, you know, the director and the producers and everyone working on the team was very diligent. And our AD, um, you know, she was super on top of things, uh, both of them, to, to make sure that we got everything that we needed. Uh, there was no waste of time. For being so nice to me. For helping me. I'm really glad I met you. I'm really glad I met you too, Sherry. But save your thanks until I get you out of this place. Wow, yeah, I did actually work in The Evil Within too. Um, well, there's, you know, I didn't work on that one as long as I clearly worked on this one. I did facial capture for that one for Esmeralda Torres. And uh, I had actually worked with um, this particular team on uh, Doom as well. So I did the facial capture for Olivia Pierce on that one. And then when I auditioned for The Evil Within 2, they had seen my work on, you know, the other one and my capabilities. So then I went ahead and worked on this one. Um, it was just a really, you know, it was fun. It was, like I said, it was a shorter job, but uh, I did just the facial capture. So it was a little bit challenging because with that, there is somebody else's voice that's there. And then there was somebody's body performance that was there. So I had to kind of work around those things and kind of make her my own. And she's a, you know, she's a tough cookie, Esmeralda Torres. Like, she's got, she won't take no bullshit. We're just, uh, oh, we actually just met last night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have been one hell of a first date, though. Yeah. Thank you so much, Resident Evil Database, for having me here on your show today. And thank you so much to all my fans out there of Claire Redfield. You guys have been so supportive and so loving. And I, I just really, really am thankful for you guys and really appreciate you opening up, you know, um, your arms with big open arms for, you know, Claire Redfield and my portrayal of her. And thank you so much again for having me on the show. And I can't wait to watch more of your videos. And for those of you that are continuing to play Resident Evil 2, or those of you that have not played yet, let's get through this. Both of us. This. Both of us. This.